chest, sudden tinnitus in the ears. This is actually typical and what we consider the most common type of tinnitus. Every day, many people, often in the morning, become aware of this annoying noise coming from their heads or ears. Not all of them will experience chronic tinnitus going to severe or even catastrophic levels. Today, we'll focus on one key difference, the nature of tinnitus. We have chronic tinnitus, which persists for an extended period, and there's temporary tinnitus, which comes and goes on its own. To our best knowledge, one of the most important factors that comes into play is the cause of tinnitus onset. Multiple major factors can trigger chronic tinnitus. One of the most common causes that often shows up is high anxiety and prolonged stress. But the truth is, many types of tinnitus actually begin with a seemingly easy-to-ignore sound in our ears. It starts at a slight level when measured using the tinnitus handicap inventory form, but if we continue to ignore it, it can escalate into a chronic catastrophic level of tinnitus. Every day, many people, often in the morning, become aware of this annoying noise coming from their heads or ears. Not all of them will experience chronic tinnitus going to severe or even catastrophic levels. And most of those people will forget about tinnitus within weeks, thanks to the natural habituation ability of the human brain. And there's temporary tinnitus, which comes and goes on its own. Don't forget to check out our video on the Tinnitus Handicap Inventory Scale. It is a great resource for understanding how tinnitus impacts our psychological well-being. The THI questions are specifically designed to measure the severity of tinnitus, mainly considering the abnormally high activity in the limbic system. That simply measuring the pitch and the loudness of tinnitus might give us a partial picture of its true nature. Unfortunately, this method doesn't tell us anything about all the different tinnitus symptoms, which can significantly impact a person's life. For example, some people can handle loud tinnitus without feeling anxious or emotionally affected by its presence. Some even sleep well and don't experience the typical difficulties associated with insomnia. However, for others with severe to catastrophic tinnitus, as measured by the Tinnitus Handicap Scale Score, insomnia tends to be quite common and challenging among tinnitus sufferers. Now that we know how severe our tinnitus is and why it is causing so many problems and stress, how do we find out what type of tinnitus we have? Is this chronic or just a temporary condition? The difference between chronic and temporary tinnitus is huge when discussing the sufferer's experience and annoyance levels. Often, even a temporary tinnitus episode from years ago can lead to chronic tinnitus when other factors come into play. Chronic tinnitus usually has multiple factors contributing to its onset. Gradual tinnitus onset is often associated with chronic tinnitus, but sudden onset can also result in a chronic condition later on. Tinnitus can be experienced in different ways with varying noise levels, pitches, and sounds. So it is important for everyone with tinnitus, no matter what kind it is, to know how to deal with it on their own when they are not ready or able to get proper treatment or use available resources to get rid of it. So how can we help ourselves in this situation? Our message to you is clear. Regardless of the reason behind your tinnitus, we must do our best to make a difference in how it develops in the future. And with the onset of tinnitus, we should make an effort to support our brain as much as possible to improve the chances of reducing tinnitus symptoms, and eventually habituating to the tinnitus by starting this process right away and treating this as an important part of our daily activities. Now comes the part that is truly important. The first step in taking control of any medical problem is accepting responsibility and viewing yourself as the most important person in the treatment or therapy process. Yes, absolutely, use any guidance you may have received from doctors or specialists, but ultimately your health is your responsibility. Be involved in your own care, get informed about your healthcare options, and seek the best professional advice to help yourself achieve your health and wellness goals. In other words, you are responsible for managing your tinnitus, and no miraculous medications or other remedies will work without your participation and effort. OK, 
Okay, now it's time to tell you what we want you to do. And this is nothing more than enhancing habituation by putting all the preconditions in place to make this process effective. So we do need someone who understands what we are hearing to advise us on what to do. Then it's time to shift our focus from excuses and tears to finding solutions and taking care of our tinnitus. Trust me, many people with minor tinnitus have found success with proven methods and techniques worldwide. Please do be aware though that if you have other conditions, such as decreased sound tolerance, hyperacusis, high levels of chronic anxiety, hearing loss, or others, you will still require a proper tinnitus assessment and specialized tests. One of the proven ways is to introduce some activity within our auditory system. But if you only have slight tinnitus, we have simple solutions for you. Avoid loud sounds, use noise protection like earmuffs, and if you are exposed to loud noise, do make sure you have controlled and limited exposure to noise or stimulation to keep the auditory system functioning. Sometimes infections can cause tinnitus or make it a lot worse. Do protect yourself and take care of yourself, especially in the fall and winter. Eliminate nicotine and caffeine and lower the salt intake. Please note that any substance known to affect the patient's blood pressure will have a very profound effect on tinnitus. If you know your blood pressure is high, check it often and talk to your doctor. Avoid stressful situations and learn to cope with the stress and anxiety. During therapy or treatment, we educate our patients how to cope with anxiety and tension. We also discuss how to stop anxiety or panic attacks from happening and how to spot them early. Cooperation and basic rules such as listening to guided meditations or practicing relaxation techniques are still needed and recommended. Please do pay attention to how your tinnitus might seem when you are truly relaxed and well rested. Another way to see if stress is having an effect is to watch what happens later on throughout the day. Does your tinnitus bother you more or get louder? If this is the case, you have immediate confirmation that your stress levels are affecting your tinnitus. Rest. Try to get at least eight hours of uninterrupted sleep every night. Good and proper sleep techniques have a very profound effect on our stress and anxiety levels. They allow our brain to reset some important functions and improve brain efficiency and lower tension, stress, and anxiety. Avoid too much quiet. There should always be low volume sounds in your listening environment, whether it's soft radio music, birds, rain, white noise, or any other sound you are comfortable with. We strongly recommend the noise generators created for this very reason that we use in our clinic, as they are much more effective than the fans that most people with tinnitus use at night. You can see that they are quite different from the white noise machines sold commercially. Don't hesitate to get in touch with our clinic to learn more about this essential piece of equipment that can significantly impact whether or not you can hear your tinnitus and whether or not you can get rid of it. We only endorse what has been proven to work. Avoid focusing on tinnitus. It can be tempting to think about it all the time or talk about it with your family but it's important to find a balance. It may not help to completely ignore tinnitus, but it also doesn't help to think about it all the time. This is an integral part of your treatment. In fact, we are planning to make a video explaining this topic soon. And finally, alcohol use can increase blood pressure, which can amplify tinnitus. Smoking can narrow the blood vessels that supply oxygen to the ears, and it can also rate blood pressure. For more information about tinnitus habituation and the habituation process, please watch the new video that will be posted on YouTube soon. Please subscribe to our channel and remember to give us a like to encourage us to do even more work to present you with the best proven tinnitus therapies or treatments and the single most important gift of knowledge. Talking about this part of our work, we are very pleased to inform you that we've got some fantastic news to share for all tinnitus sufferers in Southern Ontario. 
Our clinic is currently providing low-cost consultations for a limited time, specifically for those of you who are suffering from severe or catastrophic tinnitus. To make an appointment, use a link to our website or call our clinic directly. Also, we have decided to offer a special one-in-the-clinic visit-only program to all patients whom we refer to as distant patients coming from various locations in Canada and the U.S., especially when local professional tinnitus treatment clinics are not accessible to them. This program is just a continuation of what we used to do for many years and is built on the successful implementation of the most effective therapies used in our clinic.